Let's move beyond just giving you credit and saying you've been right and saying 4,800 is your target and we're basically there. Let's talk about sustainability. How sustainable is this move, Tom, and for how long? Uh, Scott, as a sort of, let's say our base case, because I know we're into year-end dynamics and everything is unpredictable, especially COVID. I think the rally we're seeing has a lot of fuel. Um, because we know after Thanksgiving, when Omicron was first reported that there was widespread panic and hysteria, AAII retail sentiment got to the lowest readings all of 2021. Hedge funds raised more cash and their cash balances reached the highest levels in all of 2021. So there was so much panic following Omicron hitting, people essentially positioned it as if the market was crashing. So I don't think the rally in the last five days has put much cash to work. And I think on balance, Omicron data is going to look better. Uh, our data scientist, Tireless Ken, is actually forecasting the cases to peak in early January. And I think that means the market's already bottomed in, you know, maybe it's 5,000 in early January. Yeah. Then what happens? Because if your scenario plays out and your technician's uh, scenario plays out, I've got Jay Powell and company to worry about. That's right, Scott. I think 2022 is really treacherous. Um, so if we are at 5,000 in January, uh, we could be down by June from there. Um, but I do think for the full year next year, it's a double digit year, uh, partly because, you know, we're still in a solid expansion. Monetary tightening doesn't kill bull markets, but it creates a lot of volatility in front of it. So I think if the, if the Fed liftoff is in the summer, by December, the markets can look a little bit past that. And so I think we're still up 10% for the year. I mean, I'm, I'm trying to get beyond, I think 2022 is really treacherous. I mean, that's, that's what's gonna be cut, right? And spliced out of this interview. And, and people are gonna talk headlines that, you know, Tom Lee thinks you can get out of 21 and into 22 with a bang, but then you could have some real issues if you think that it's going to be treacherous and once the Fed starts to get a little more aggressive, let's say by the summer, June, as you say yourself, what kind of pullback do you think we're going to have? Um, Scott, as you know, uh, in the past 12 months, we had four corrections of 4% or more, but every time it felt like the sky was falling. So in 2022, in the first half, I think the possibility of a drawdown Close, uh, closer to 10% is probable. Um, and so I think people are going to be in, in widespread panic, but that would be a buying opportunity. Um, and then in terms of positioning, I, I think that's why FANG is our second favorite sector in, in 2022. Interesting. Joe, you have a question for Tom Lee? I do, Tom. You mentioned FANG, and given the uh, significant contribution that it provides, if you are going to have a 10% double digit decline, wouldn't we ultimately have to see uh, the weakness that we have not seen in those mega cap type stocks uh, in the first half of the year? Yeah. Uh, Joe, that's a great question because, as, yeah, you're right. Fang is, I mean, the market's event is becoming increasingly Fang. Um, you know, tech and comm services is more than 40%. Fang earnings next year are going to grow 30% and PEs fell in 2021, so I, I think PE expands next year for FANG, and actually PE derates and re-rates every other year. So I, I, our base case sort of is FANG's up 30% or more. Um, but it, I think it means that if there's panic around inflation and Fed tightening, the rest of the market takes it on the chin pretty hard. So I, I think FANG is pretty solid in the first half, and then everything else looks really shaky.